on the River Weaver, working with our framework contractor Land and Water Services to dredge the canal for navigation. And we've come here today to talk about how when we carry out works on the waterway, we need to implement biosecurity measures to make sure that we're not spreading invasive species. More than 50 non-native species have accidentally been introduced into our canals, rivers and lakes from all over the world. And numbers are rising rapidly. They can cause major damage. They outcompete native wildlife, damage ecosystems and spread disease. They can also block canals, forming a thick green carpet which restricts navigation, clogs up propellers and damages boats. The Canal and River Trust is a charity and every year it costs us hundreds of thousands of pounds to clear unwanted vegetation and manage the delicate ecosystems which exist in many of our waterways. So what harmful plants and animals do we need to watch out for? So we're talking about things like Japanese knotweed and giant hogweed, but also things that you might not see like freshwater shrimp or zebra and quagga mussels. Quagga mussels have even been found in an isolated Anglian water reservoir in Lincolnshire. The nearest other known place where, with quagga mussels is in London, which is over 140 miles away. So how did this species travel overland for such a long distance? It probably hitchhiked on a person, on their equipment, tools or machinery. Some species can survive for days, even up to a week in a damp environment. So how can people help? One of the most important things everyone can do is to stop the spread of harmful plants and animals to a new area. There are three simple steps to remember. Check, clean, dry. This should be done before you leave a waterway, even if you're only moving to another spot on the same waterway, but a few miles away. The first step is to check any clothing, tools or equipment that have come into contact with the water, or even mud around the water. If you find any plant fragments or animals, remove them and leave them at the site. Ideally bin them, but always make sure that they can't get back into the water. The second step is to clean your clothing, tools or equipment. Ideally with hot water, but real good rinse with cold water will also dislodge bits of plants and young animals that you cannot see. Use a bottle of fresh water if you have one, or wash things down with a hose. Try and do it on a surface where the water can drain into the ground. The last step is to dry everything completely, ideally in the sun, leaving no damp patches. Don't forget about clothes as well, things like wetsuits, waders on boots. Small invertebrates can live for days in damp folds and clothing and seeds can get stuck in the tread of muddy boots. So Peter, we're here with Land and Water Services to talk about invasive species, but what do they need to think about for Check Clean Dry? Well, so the first thing to start with is all this big plant, isn't it? So we've got diggers, we've got dumpers, we've got all kinds of vehicles here, and it's all kit that will go from site to site. So really they need to make sure that when they bring it to a new site like this, that it's clean before it gets here. Check to see whether there's any obvious mud or plant material or, or other stuff on the vehicle, particularly in the tracks or the bucket or anything that might have been in the mud or the water. If there is stuff, clean it off. A jet wash is fantastic on these kinds of big bits of kit. Um, and then if you're moving stuff away to another site, make sure it's dry before it goes somewhere else and then you can be sure that you've got rid of everything. So what about smaller stuff like tools and equipment? Yeah, right, so obviously on a lot of our jobs, people are using small kit like shovels and, and so on. And that's just as important because as you can see from the state of this spade, yeah, there's mud there that I might be transferring from one job to another. Now, if you're on the same job for a long period of time, obviously you don't need to worry about that, the kit's not going anywhere. But if you're on a more reactive team and you're moving from one side to another in the same day, then clearly we don't want to be tracking this mud from the River Weaver up onto the Trent and Mersey or the Shropshire Union or somewhere else. So it's really important that again you check it and clean it and if you can dry it before you leave site. Another area that potentially we need to think about is your clothing like your boots and anything like waders or anything what about check clean dry with those sorts of things? Yeah, absolutely, Tom. So a lot of our work is really mucky. So you know, we are going to get covered in mud from, from doing works on the waterways. And so it's very easy for us to transfer plants and materials from, from one site to another if we don't clean ourselves as we go. Now, I'm not terribly muddy today, but I have got some mud on my boots there. Um, and we don't want to be tracing that off to another site. So just check it to see if there's anything on it that needs removing. Clean off what you can with water and with a brush. Um, and, then, and, and then make sure that you dry it out if you can. So what's the risk about moving soil around and preventing invasive species being spread like that? Well obviously if you know you've got Japanese knotweed or Himalayan balsam or something like that on the site, then when you start excavating in this area, we don't want to be picking any of that material up and moving it off site because that would be spreading those invasive plants. 
We ask everyone to play their part. Please help us, help keep our waterways, which we all love, special. Thank you.